Welcome back. What we're going to do in this video is talk about Henderson-Hasselbalch problems, okay? And what I have written here, this is the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. And what we did in the last video is we talked about that at the pKa, um, when the pKa is equal to the pH, the concentrations of the conjugate base and the conjugate acid are equal, okay? But something different is going to happen when they're not equal. For example, in this problem, we know that the conjugate base concentration is 0.5 moles and the conjugate acid concentration is 0.1 moles. So you can see that when we take the log base 10 of this term for this particular problem, we're going to get a number that's not zero. Remember that when the conjugate acid and base concentrations were equal, we got a one in the argument of the logarithm function, and when we take the log of one, we get zero. So in that case, the pH was equal to the pKa. But in this case, they're not equal, so we're going to have some value that's not zero for this log term. And then we're going to add that onto the pKa, and we're going to get a new pH. So the pH is not going to be equal to the pKa when the conjugate acid and conjugate base concentrations are not equal. Okay. So in this problem, what we're going to have is we're going to have a simple um, monoprotic acid base buffer, and it has a pKa of 3.86. And this particular molecule on the right here, this one is called lactic acid. And the ionizable proton is the one that I'm going to show right here. This is the one that's on the carboxylic acid. And so, for instance, when this carboxylic acid gets deprotonated, it's going to form the carboxylate form, which is called lactate. And I've abbreviated this lactate as A minus. And the acid form, the lactic acid, is HA. Okay. And we know in this particular problem, we're going to have a conjugate acid, conjugate acid a concentration of 0.1 moles and a conjugate base concentration of 0.5 moles. Okay. Now, in general, when, you, when you're doing Henderson-Hasselbalch problems, there's really only two types of problems that you can have in the context of biochemistry. One of them is a lot simpler than the other, and that's the one we're going to do in this problem. And that's what is the pH. So in other words, what they're going to do is they're going to give you the concentrations of the acid and base, and they're going to ask you to find the pH. That's what we're going to do in this video. Okay. The other kind of problem is a lot more complicated, and it's going to, you're going to get a system of two equations and two unknowns. And that's when they actually give you a pH, and they ask you to find the concentrations of the individual species. And that's going to be a lot more difficult to do. But in this one, we're actually going to look at the first type of problem. Okay. But before we actually jump into the problem, let's just get a little bit of intuition on what's happening. What I've drawn here on the right side of the screen is I've drawn a titration curve for lactic acid. So notice this blue dot that's right here. This represents um, when, we, when we've added zero molar equivalents of sodium hydroxide. So in other words, we, we have lactic acid um, in solution and we have a very low pH. In this case, it's approximately one. So it's in the fully protonated state. And we haven't added any hydroxide yet. But what we're going to do is we're going to slowly titrate the lactic acid with sodium hydroxide. And what's going to happen, because hydroxide's a strong base, is we're going to increase the pH. So as we're moving along the pH curve, we're increasing um, the hydroxide that we're adding into the solution, and we're eventually going to get to a pH that's equal to the pKa. Now notice this, um, I'll go ahead and solidify this line right here. This vertical line right here that corresponds to 0.5 molar equivalents of sodium hydroxide, it corresponds to a pH that's equal to the pKa. Now on the left side of that line, the predominant species is going to be lactic acid. On the right side of the line, the predominant species will be lactate, A minus. Okay? But at that pH, in other words, at 0.5 molar equivalents where the pH is equal to the pKa, that means that the concentrations of HA and A minus will be equal. And then I continue to add sodium hydroxide and it raises the pH above the pKa and we keep going from there and we can keep raising the pH and so forth. Now the only um, ionizable group that we're really concerned with here is the carboxylic acid of lactic acid. Okay. And of course, when we add hydroxide, we're going to get more and more lactate. And then as we raise the pH above the pKa, we're going to have mostly lactate in there. Okay. Now, in this particular problem, we're given a pKa, and we're also given the concentrations of each of the individual species in the buffer. Okay. So what we're essentially going to do is we already have the equation right here, so let's just start plugging in numbers. Okay, so we're trying to find the pH um, when the concentration of the conjugate base, which is lactate, is 0.5 moles, and the concentration of the conjugate acid is 0.1 moles. Okay, so the pH is going to be equal to the pKa, which is 3.86, plus 
plus the log base 10 of this quantity where the argument is going to be 0.5 moles. And notice the moles would just cancel out. And the conjugate acid concentration is going to be 0.1. Okay? And notice that we can actually simplify this a little bit. And we get that the pH is going to be equal to 3.86 plus the log base 10. Notice that if we take 0.5 divided by 0.1, that's just going to be 5. So it's going to be the logarithm base 10 of 5. Now before we really go into actually calculating what this turns out to be, I want to really think about something. Okay, um, Before you actually do the calculation, you should really think about where are we on this titration curve? Well, if we think about the concentrations of the individual species in here, which one do we have more of? Well, the problem told us that we actually had more of the conjugate base, right? We had more of the conjugate base and less of the conjugate acid. So knowing that information, where on this titration curve should we be? Should we be above the pKa in terms of pH or below the pKa? Well, we have more base present here, so that implies that we should be somewhere above the pKa because we have more base. And actually what we'll find out is that when we actually calculate this, we are going to find out that we have a pH that's actually above the pKa. And I think you can actually tell that looking at this because when you take the logarithm of a number that is um, greater than 1, and 5 certainly is, you're going to get a number that's greater than 0. So we're going to be adding a number that's greater than 0 to 3.86, so we are going to get a higher pH than the pKa. And when we calculate this out, we get that the the pH to uh, three significant figures is approximately 4.56. So that is our pH once we add um, the hydroxide and we put a box around our answer.